this DM thread. So, my DM threw out our last campaign and told us all to show up next session with just our dice, leaving our collected materials and sheets behind. When we arrived he gave us a choice of all level NPCs. We were now shit tier nobodies in a shit tier town in a shit tier kingdom in shit tier nowhere. Our party consisted of myself, the village blacksmith who can't really make anything much better than simple or martial weapons, and even then can mostly just make horseshoes and nails and shit. The village healer, does not into magic, does not into potions beyond herbal teas, and does not into healing beyond, a vague understanding of good hygiene and drinking fresh water. A farmer, a fisherman, we started off on a fine new morning, and found out that the local innkeeper had rats in the cellar, eating up his foodstuffs and doing your typical low level rat shenanigans from every RPG. We were offered the chance to try and locate some sort of wandering adventurer to handle this. We chose to settle the affair yourself. Total party kill. We ray rolled. This time, we played a farmhand, a stable boy, a messenger, and a woodworker. We prepared ourselves ahead of time. After hearing of the grisly deaths of the village's only blacksmith, the local healer, one of the fishermen, and the farmhand's boss. We knew exactly how we'd take care of the rats, by sealing Emma away in that cellar and walling her up. The woodworker prepared his sturdiest boards. We went into the inn only to find the innkeeper dead, and we were beset upon by the rats from the shadows. We had, in our former lives, forgotten to close the door behind us. We reraled. We attempted yet again, this time as a huntsman, the village drunk, the gatekeeper, and a tailor. We thought things would be a lot simpler. After all, we now had a huntsman, who while not necessarily a ranger or rough and tumble rogue, could at least operate a bow. Our plan, this time, was to prepare an ambush outside the door of the inn. Our huntsman was ready with his bow and arrow, and he also had a bear trap of sorts that we set just by the door's entrance. We threw open the door. Nothing. We knew they were still inside. Perhaps in the cellar, because we could hear the gnawing, the chewing, the terrible chewing. We coerced our village drunk to go inside with a torch, just to rouse the rats and flush them out. He did so, waving the torch around just inside the inn before sprinting back outside, and into the bear trap. We tried to assist him, and then the rats were upon us. Our huntsman got off two shots. We bludgeoned a wounded rat to death, but they were too much for us. There were five rats in all, four remaining after the battle. Now the rats were loose in the village. This time we were playing as a traveling merchant who had been staying at the inn. A baker, a cobbler and a librarian. A day had passed. The children of the rats grow strong on the flesh of our neighbors, and yet worse terrors such as spiders and a snake, plagued our village. Windows and doors are boarded up. The streets are empty. We provided them enough food, after all. Not that it sated them. We had a new mission. Now. Survival. Escape. We couldn't convince those who remained in the village, something like 20, ourselves included, that it was wiser to flee. After all, some had lived here their whole lives. A couple were too old to run, a couple too young. We were only able to convince one other, a minstrel, not a bard. Sir, the man's music is passable at best and certainly not magical, to make the dash to the gate with us. We waited until the dawn, thinking that with the coming light the creatures that had invaded our peaceful village might return to the shadows. The cobbler, ironically, in his well-made shoes, reached the thick, towering log gate of our village first. We could hear the rats scrambling after us, practically biting at our heels. The minstrel fell to them. We didn't turn back. The cobbler turned, his face pale, screaming. It's locked. The gatekeeper had the key. The village was now a tomb. This is, unfortunately, where our tale ends. We resumed a more traditional and regular campaign, and several weeks went by as standard Dungeons and Dragons. At one point, while hiking up in the hills, near a forest, we came across an old, abandoned village. The gates had been forced open from the outside, by bandits most likely, perhaps the orcish raiders we were after. There was little remarkable about the town and we found little to take with us. It seemed as though nobody had survived. A few bodies, likely dead for weeks, little but gnawed bones remaining, 
littered the villages one road, and the story was more or less the same in each of the houses. Some of which were quite disturbing. The poor townsfolk had been driven mad, it seemed, from cabin fever. It quite puzzled us, and we theorized out loud what might have happened, if bandits had maybe invaded and forced the villagers to stay in their homes while making use of the villagers' supplies. It wasn't until we reached the inn, and found, four corpses and a bear trap, one still caught in the jaws, outside the door that we realized where we were. We never bitched about helping out some random NPC with his rat problem again. So yeah, this is a wee short one. Um, normally I don't really like to do the really, really short ones, but this story I thought was so good that fuck it, I, could, I just had to. I couldn't help myself. Um, I personally really enjoyed it. Um, I just love the idea of the town being completely wiped out by the rats in the basement. You know, like I could something so simple just get away, blown out, way to go. And I love the way they actually got to see the aftermath. You know, I thought that was really cool. Um, no, I really enjoyed this one, and I really recommend any DMs out there that are listening to definitely try and do this themselves. You know, I think it's a good exercise in understanding the motivations and the will behind a lot of the NPCs. You know, because a lot of the time, let's be honest, NPCs can turn into a bit of a blur sometimes, and it's really important to make, like, you know, really... It's nice to give people a bit more of a connection to them. Does that make any sense? But look, no, enough rambling from me. Um, as always, subscribe, check the Discord out. Um, my Facebook page has actually grown big time in the past week. Um, it's went up, like, you know, it, it was sitting at like 100 people. But because I'm not banned from Facebook anymore, it's uh, I've just been shitposting on it pretty non-stop. And so there's a few of the boys from the Discord. So look, if you're interested in that, definitely check out the Facebook page. Cause you know, it's a good one, so that's nice. But look, I've been speaking enough, and you know, this is only meant to be a wee short, sweet, short wee video for you guys. So, like, I hope you guys have enjoyed, and I'll see you in the next video. So, I've recently moved Nick Bairdia merch over to Teesprings and have a few new designs. Listings are below the video and in the description. So, I am an affiliate of NordVPN. If you have been thinking of getting a VPN with everything going on at the minute, NordVPN is offering 75% off a three year plan. I have been using Nor myself for a few years now because it helps support a lot of the people I like to watch on YouTube and I think it's pretty cool they have let me become an affiliate. So check out norvpn.org forward slash nickbeardier and use coupon code nickbeardier for 75% off while the offer is on. Just stop! Just stop it! Stop! No! Just stop it! It's time to stop! It's time to stop, okay? No more! Where the fuck are your parents? Who are your parents? I'm gonna call Child Protective Services. It's time to stop!